Welcome to Success Weekly with James Tharris, a weekly dose of thought-provoking ideas and helpful tips on improving your mindset. And now, here's your host, James Tharris. Hello and welcome to another episode of Success Weekly. I'm your host, James Tharris, and today we are going to talk about opportunities. In order to become successful, you have to learn how to take opportunities when they present themselves. A very famous motivational speaker and author named Zig Ziglar, you may be familiar with him, said that success happens when opportunity meets preparation. Let me repeat that again. Success happens when opportunity meets preparation. So this is this has played out in my life many, many, many times, and I'm sure that it's played, in, played out in your life as well. But it's a matter of observing and learning to learning to see these opportunities when they present themselves and also to be prepared for them when those opportunities do present themselves. So part of being successful is learning how to how to spot these opportunities when they avail themselves. And so for example, a couple of things might be that it it might be being in the right place at the right time where you meet the right person. Uh, it might be investing in stocks at the right time. Can you imagine if, if we had invested in stocks in like let's say Microsoft or Google or Amazon or um, Facebook or Netflix or some of these companies that have become monster companies. Can you imagine if you had invested in them when they were startups, when they first became an IPO, which is a, a, a what do you call it? initial public offering. There we go. I couldn't think of that for a second. So imagine if we if, if we had bought those stocks when they originally became IPOs and, and were offered to the public. We, we could be millionaires from a very small amount of, of uh, investment. A thousand or two thousand dollars could probably turn into a million in some of these cases. And it's just about having the opportunity to, to and, and the foresight to see that this is an opportunity. This is the, the, the next big thing. You know, computers are the next big thing. Um, Apple, I guess, with the iPhone. If we had, you know, imagine if you had purchased stock in Apple before the iPhone was invented, you know, how much you could have made off of that. See, that's an opportunity, but we weren't prepared for it in many cases. We didn't have the information or maybe we didn't have the money to invest at that time uh, because we had a car, pa car payment come due or we had a, you know, a, a car repair come due and a, and a repair to the house and then a dental bill at the same time and it took away the, the preparation part of the opportunity. And then, of course, you know, time goes by and the stock rises and we've missed the, kind of missed the boat. And a lot of times we'll get in too late and we end up buying at a, at a too high of a rate and sometimes you can lose money in those opportunities as well. Um, another opportunity might be buying a piece of real estate when the market's low. If you had bought a house in 2009, 10, or 11, it would have been worth a heck of a lot more today. That would have been a great opportunity. And I can tell you from my own personal experience, in 2011, I tried moving to Florida to purchase a home at rock bottom prices here in the Florida area, but I had trouble selling my home in Indiana at that time. So as much as I tried, I was prepared for the opportunity and the opportunity was there. I just couldn't make it work because I couldn't sell my own house. So that, that opportunity kind of, you know, went, went past and I missed that opportunity. And it took me an extra five to six years before I could finally make that a reality. Now, fortunately for me, I was able to get into a, a nice home in a nice area at, at a, a recent, decently low price that I believe that we, if we ever sold our house, we would make some decent money off of it. So uh, again, I took the, the right opportunity at the right time. So uh, sometimes that can be the opportunity. Those are, are kind of large opportunities. Uh, you have some smaller opportunities that might be something that, that happens more often, and that might be accepting a job opportunity that could lead to somewhere better. Uh, maybe you're in your company, you get offered an opportunity to move into a supervisory position or management position, but not with a lot more, lot more pay. You get a lot more responsibility, but maybe some, some, sometimes the same amount of pay or, or slightly more pay, and you start thinking, well, I don't know if this is worth it because of the additional responsibilities. 
But the way to really look at that is to say, well, what could this lead to in the next three to five or 10 years? Is this something that could lead to something even better? And maybe for the first three to five years, you aren't making much at all and you're, you've got a lot of responsibility. But the opportunity of having this new position gives you the opportunity to rub elbows and rub shoulders with the right people that help you, you know, catapult, catapult or propel yourself up to the next level in that company or maybe even into a different company or a different industry altogether and all because you chose to take that small opportunity of becoming a manage, manager or supervisor in the current company you're working at. Or maybe it's a, just a, a total job opportunity that you, you weren't expecting that somebody you know, offers to you and you're already employed someplace else and taking this opportunity would, would you know, remove your safety net for a time. But again, is it, is it worth taking the risk? That might be an opportunity for you. All right. Uh, now, on, on top of that, we have a lot of small daily opportunities that we can take advantage of, and, and many of us are. Obviously, I'm preaching to the choir if you're listening to this, but you probably have friends that, that don't listen to podcasts. They don't read books. They don't do anything uh, outside of, of work for education. And there's, a, there's probably a good reason why those same people are not really moving ahead in life. So your small daily opportunities could be reading. You know, that's something I like to do every single day because occasionally what will happen is, is I'm in the middle of trying to solve a problem and I'll read a book or I'll read a magazine article or I'll read something somewhere and the answer will present itself. And had I not taken the opportunity to read instead of play on my phone, I may, not, may have missed that piece of information and that kept me from, from doing something else. Just reading every day gives you a lot of ideas and creativity that you wouldn't have on your own otherwise. And I'll tell you what, it's done wonders for me in my personal life and in my business life. And I, I highly encourage that. Uh, you know, of course, listening to podcasts, my podcast is one of a thousand other podcasts out there. And this is kind of like the new radio station of today. It's, it's great. It's a great opportunity for you to learn and absorb information from different people from different walks of life with different, differing uh, perceptions on things and can really expand your thinking. So that's another opportunity that you can take daily. Uh, complimenting somebody. How many times during, throughout a day do we have to compliment somebody? Now, you might think, well, how is complimenting somebody going to help me? Well, first of all, I, I want to separate complimenting from flattery. Now, flattery is basically you know, giving somebody a, an insincere compliment when you're lying to them and you tell somebody that they have nice hair and you really don't think that their hair looks nice. So look for something that you can compliment somebody on because if, if it does nothing else, it will make you feel better about yourself. It'll raise your self-image and that could be an opportunity that could lead to another opportunity later in that day or later in the week that you just don't see coming right now. So complimenting somebody might, might even come back to, to pay you dividends in the future. You might compliment somebody today and, and you, you bring them out of a funk and they were just about, you know, about to jump off of a bridge because they thought that, that, that nobody liked them and that, that life wasn't worth living and that one compliment might have saved their life. And, and playing it out further because you saved their life, maybe they, they, in the future they do something to pay you back that you didn't expect. And that's not the reason you do the, give the compliment. You give it from a sincere place in your heart, but you, it, it, you just never know when that can lead to something else. So it's always a good thing to do. It's like sowing and reaping, right? You sow good seeds, you reap good rewards. Uh, same thing with helping somebody in need. You help somebody today. You help somebody at the side of the road that needs that run out of gas. Uh, or they've got a flat tire on their bike or whatever. You know, that could be, could be something that comes back to pay you dividends in the future when your car breaks down or when you get a flat tire and you don't even realize that it was something you did a year or 10 years ago that's coming back now to pay you dividends. So this is the, taking these opportunities to be helpful to your fellow man and complimentary to other people can be those daily little things that lead to bigger things. All right, now I've got a couple of little things I'm going to tell you about as far as my personal opportunities, and then I'm going to leave you with uh, one, one simple thought. All right, so here's the, here's the first thing. As you know, if you've been listening to my podcast, I am in the martial arts industry. I'm a martial arts instructor and teach martial arts to kids and families. And a lot of the people that are in my industry, in my area, have the opportunity to learn how to improve their businesses, but they choose not to financially prepare for these opportunities as they come around each year. 
And as a result, they continue to struggle because they miss these opportunities when they come around each year. So I can't tell you how many times I'll ask somebody, are you going to the martial arts super show, which is a, a huge convention where you can train with some of the, the top UFC fighters and you can train with some of the top traditional martial artists. You could train with Bill Superfoot Wallace and some of the, the other names that I mentioned there. And you have the opportunity to learn better business practices, how to serve your clients better and, and things that you should be doing and things you shouldn't be doing. Uh, so a lot of, I'll ask a lot of my friends in the industry, are you going to this? And they will say, oh no, I, I can't afford it. And we're talking about a $300 ticket and maybe, uh, I don't know, a $600 air, airplane ticket and a few hundred dollars for a couple of nights in a hotel. So a thousand dollars or less, okay? So they have to save up a thousand dollars to get to this one event, but they don't and they say, oh, I can't afford it. And that's the reason why they are continuing to struggle with, it, with their schools because they're not growing. If they had, take, if they had just taken the opportunity to, to set aside a hundred dollars per month, by the end of 10 months, they would have that thousand dollars to invest when the 12th month came about and maybe a, an extra hundred dollars for spending money to, to eat and do whatever else they wanted to do with it. But the, the return on investment that they would get if they would just save this thousand dollars is probably in the neighborhood of 10 times their investment. Each and every time I go to this one event, I get 10 times the, the return on investment that I spend on it. And I attend other events besides that as well. But a lot of my friends in the martial arts decide not to attend these things. They don't take these opportunities. They don't see the need. They're not prepared for it. And they, they continue, continually let these opportunities pass them by. And year after year after year, they're, they're the same. They've got the same active student count. They, they're making the same amount of money. And in many cases, they're making less money because it's becoming more and more competitive these days with, with uh, technology. And these same guys are just not staying up with the trends and the, the uh, business practices and things like this. And so they're missing out on these opportunities and it's affecting their businesses. Right now, I mentioned um, uh, training with uh, uh, Bill Superfoot Wallace. I think I mentioned that anyway. And if I didn't, I'm going to tell you really quick about how I had this opportunity. Back in 1990, when I was running my master's martial arts school for him, I ran it in the afternoons or, and opened it and cleaned it and taught some of the classes in the afternoon until, until he got there in the evenings. And I would answer phones and set appointments and enroll people in the program and sell uniforms and training equipment to them and everything. One of my responsibilities was emptying the trash. Well, one day, I, as I was going to empty the trash, I picked up an envelope and I could see through the envelope there was a silhouette of a man doing a sidekick. And I recognized this silhouette because I had pictures of this guy on my wall in my, in my bedroom back at that time. It was a, I was very big into the kickboxing scene and, of course, Bruce Lee and all these things. So I had all the pictures of Bruce Lee on my wall and posters. And then, of course, I had this guy's picture on my wall as well doing his beautiful sidekick. And his name is Bill Superfoot Wallace. So I tore the envelope open and saw that there was an opportunity to meet this man in 1990 at a seminar in Indianapolis. And so I secretly took that uh, flyer information and put it in my pocket. And I went to this seminar and I met my, my hero, Bill Superfoot Wallace, back in 1990. Now, that was fantastic on its own. But what that led to was continual future meetings with Bill, Bill Wallace and a, a two-year traveling and training experience with him and having him stay at my house and I got to see things that nobody else got to see and learn things about the man that nobody else got to learn about. I got to attend uh, an, an alumni, alumni uh, award that he got and meet his parents at, at uh, his, his school. At, uh, I can't think of the name. I want to say Ball State. I'm not sure if that's it though. It starts to be, I think it's Ball State University. And uh, I got to be there for that. I was the only person outside of his parents that was there with him that day. And that led me to many, many other opportunities and meeting a lot of other people. People, if you're a martial arts person, you're going to know these names. And if you're not, you can look them up and you can see who they are. They're very, very big names. As a result of, of my opportunity to meet Bill Superfoot Wallace in 1990, I, I also got to meet Chuck Norris, not once, but twice, Richard Norton, and I had Richard Norton stay out of my house and do seminar for my, my students. Cynthia Rothrock, Benny Urquidez, uh, 
Ernie Reyes Jr., Joe Lewis, uh, Jeff Smith, and, and so many other people that I've gotten an opportunity to meet just because I took that opportunity to meet Bill Wallace back in 1990. Now, I also took an opportunity, let's say this was probably 2004, I took an opportunity to fly out <clears throat> to fly out to California to meet with a man that I had never met before who studied a, and, and taught an art that I teach and, and had been studying for many years and wanted to get some more information on. I'd never met him in person and never spoke to him on the phone in person, but I had the opportunity to fly out and meet with him and his son. And that one, met, that one meeting with him led to one of my masters, one of my grandmasters, which opened the door to additional opportunities that eventually led to a book that I wrote that continues to be purchased all around the world. It's on Amazon.com and it's, it's called Korean Kung Fu, The Chinese Connection. You can look it up and you can see that it gets great reviews and that's all the, that, that all happened because I took the opportunity from a little website that I found to go fly out and meet with this man in, Ca in California who led me to another man and, and opened the door to a lot of other people that I would never have had the opportunity to meet. So it gave me the opportunity to meet and train with people that I would never had the opportunity to train with initially. And it, it was a fantastic, it turned out to be a fantastic investment of my time and resources. Now, in the Palm Harbor area of Florida, or Clearwater, or Dunedin, or Tarpon Springs, and some of these surrounding areas, some of, some of the students or some of the people in the, in the area, they're going, they're going to have what could be an opportunity of their lifetime by becoming one of the first people to train to black belt at our brand new school here in Florida and become one of the founding members and senior students and who knows what opportunities that might lead to in the future for them so folks you've got to start looking for opportunities and you've got to be prepared to take them when they come and so I recommend you, you save some money for just such opportunities. Make sure you have $1,000, at least $1,000 saved up for some such opportunity that might avail itself to you that could lead to many, many other opportunities in the future. So I'll leave you with this, and that is this, and it's, I'm going right back to Zig Ziglar's quote, and it's this. Yes, success really does happen when opportunity meets preparation. So until next week, this is James Therese saying, be successful. That's all for this week. Tune in next week for another episode of Success Weekly. Do you have an idea you'd like James to talk about in an upcoming episode? Post your comments and be sure to share this podcast with friends.